from family events to volunteer opportunities to community happenings, there is a lot going on in your community. Learn about all the possibilities and opportunities on this episode of Community Hotline. Hi, and welcome to Community Hotline. My name is Monica Weitzel. We're here in Gresham at Metro East Community Media. Tonight we have a show just chock full of information about things that are going on in your community and ways that you can find out more about how to become involved. Starting off tonight, I have with me Allison Hart, my friend who has been here several times, and I'm happy to have you here again. Allison is the CEO of the Gresham Area Chamber of Commerce and Visitors Center. Thank you, Monica. Yeah. It's a pleasure to be back with you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Now, the, um, we're winding up the, the end of 2012. You've, you've done a lot of stuff. You've been very busy this year. Um, but before we go into some of the things that you've accomplished and maybe what you hope to accomplish next year, for those who maybe are not familiar with the Chamber, could you tell us just a little bit about what your mission is, why why people should become involved with the Chamber of Commerce, and, and what your what your mission is and what your goals are. Th certainly. Is um, that too much to ask? <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot, huh? Yeah, all at once. Um, that's why I make notes so I can cheat there and you understand go. where you're I'm good. going. You're good. Um, you know, the, the Chamber has been serving the community since 1931, so we're a long-standing organization, and um, we are a nonprofit, a private nonprofit business association, and our our mission is to bring bringing together and serving the business community and so really being the hub how I think of it I have a, I always like to talk with my hands but we're like the the spoke um, the center of the spoke in a wheel and so everything comes through us and we keep all people connected leads Rome, all, all exactly to exactly the and so there's there's a variety of things we do but we have four pillars that we work upon and then everything else fans out from there and it's promoting the community um, connecting businesses and people essentially mm -hmm. business and people um, advancing a, a vibrant and prosperous local economy and then representing the business voice to government uh, on all levels. Right. And those are some things I don't think everybody knows that the chamber does, especially the last one I think. Um, so how do you go about doing these things? We're very busy, first yeah. of all. Yes. Um, there's a lot of different things we do. Um, one of the things, for example, is we have a, a business directory, and I brought that before. I didn't mm -hmm. bring it this mm -hmm. time, but I one of the, the time. one of the great things this year is we received award an award from the Oregon State Chamber of Commerce um, for our particular publication as awesome. the best in the state for mid-sized chambers. So we're really excited about it that because be. it shows that our work of promoting through our directory is is effective and um, was noted. Um, we also, as you said, have a visitor center, and we have people who come in but as a part of that we do a lot of outreach we have a visitor map that we produce um, for the region it's actually the whole East Multnomah County region which okay. we do cover um, although we're called the Gresham Area Chamber we cover Fairview Wood Village we even have members in Boring Damascus we have oh. members in Troutdale we have members in East Portland so it's it's more broad reaching right, so right. we're more interested in um, economic health for the full region not just the Gresham the right. city of Gresham because everything is so interconnected connected and that's mm -hmm. why it's so important to think for of all of the jurisdictions in the area. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned the uh, award you got for your directory. Did you not also get an award for um, being one of the best nonprofits to work for? We did. We actually in the medium nonprofit category we were 19th on the list of 100 best nonprofits to work for. So <laughs> that was really impressive. exciting that's this great. year as yeah. well. Yeah. So do you agree? Is it a good place to it's work? It's a great place yeah. to work. But I'm the boss so I can't really be partial. Oh, well, so. well that says something for you then I think. Right. So you, you talk about um, promoting the community, and that's and that's one thing you do. Um, connecting business and people. What you have um, events, you you sponsor events. What 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 else do you do besides the directories and the maps and and right? Well, we do a lot of education, but two of our key things that um, have happened this fall. One of them was our economic summit, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. where we do a half day presentation on what's happening in the region. What are the economic development things that are taking place? Um, how do we work together as a region to strengthen our area? What are the the challenges that we face, and what are the great things that we're doing? Um, we were fortunate this year to have the governor as our keynote speaker, which was very was exciting great. for us. Yeah. We I couldn't remember the last time a governor had come out and spoken for the chamber, not an election cycle. Oh, so nice. um, that felt like a feather in our caps <laughs> yes. this year. And it was a great um, 
conference uh, day, we had someone from the port speak. We had someone from Boeing talk about their expansion. Um, Mayor Bemis of Gresham spoke about what, what's happening in the city of Gresham. That's where we're growing. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really a briefing of everything and then some looking forward as well on that particular um, event. But there's another event that we had that was very exciting because it was our inaugural um, and it was our Business Excellence Awards and we just completed just that, that last meeting. week. Yes, yes. Right. And um, for many years, the Chamber did an event called the Golden Note. Right. And this is a new iteration of the Golden Note. The Golden Note was specifically for nonprofit volunteers. Right. I've acknowledging I've several of those. Right. Yes. And I believe mm -hmm. at some point Metro East had put up some of their volunteers for mm -hmm. nominees oh, yes. as well. Yes, did. Um, and we felt that as an organization, since we're largely about we're serving the community but largely serving the business community that we needed to acknowledge the amazing things that our businesses do in this area so we expanded the event and, and changed the name um, to business excellence awards and we gave six awards this year um, we gave let's see I have to look at my cheat sheet uh, two business excellence awards one for small business one for large we had an entrepreneur of the year and then in the tradition of the golden note we gave two volunteer of the year awards one that was put forth through a vol for a nonprofit organization mm -hmm. and one um, that we gave that was put forth for business because many businesses hmm. support their employees to do a lot of volunteer time That's true. and so we felt that it was important for them to have a category to put up their like excellent that. volunteers like and then we gave one more award which was the tri-local first award mm. um, for a company that showed excellence in promoting uh, shopping local that's great. Now, did the did the people who got the awards did they know ahead no. of time? No, there was only so a few of us that knew ahead of time, so we had a lot that of behind the curtain, yeah. um, which was very fun for me on that part yeah. um, to know who was going to win, but they didn't know. So, and, and what, do you think it was well received? It was very well received, and one of the things that we did differently is we actually had a panel of judges who um, who evaluated the nominees and so they were outside the community with the exception of Travis Stovall who's the executive director of mm -hmm. East Metro Economic Alliance um, and when they received the nominations the names were not on the nominations so oh, they so didn't know who it was so it, it was yes. completely um, yeah. anonymous and um, so we feel like it was a very impartial process. Yeah. Um, so really the, those, the cream of the crop rose to the top and although we have many, many excellent businesses and it was a hard choice. Oh, we do, we do. This is a great community and it really pulls together. Now you, um, but obviously any community has its problems and its issues mm -hmm. and as the chamber you do a lot of advocacy work and tell me a little bit about that, what, what it is you do. As That's far right, what I said how we speak it is we um, mm -hmm. represent the business voice to government and the idea of that is you know business contributes so much to the community and so much to the economy and one of the roles of many chambers is to advocate for business and so when issues come up that will affect business regulations or business bottom line that's where the the chamber can become actively involved and Give it might be an example of what you might well it might be on a specific ballot measure or it might be with a government regulation or land use or an environmental mm -hmm. issue um, this year we revamped our whole government affairs program and um, rewrote our policy and we're now actively taking stands on measures and we did this year um, on measure 26 141 I don't know if you remember that there was a, a districting yes, measure. I did. That was a big deal. It that was. was deal. It was. And we felt like as a business organization that it was important for us to, to make a statement. So we held a forum where we heard the pros and cons from mm -hmm. both sides um, who were representing the issue. And then we took a stand in opposition of that particular measure because we felt that um, there's greater representation when you can vote for all of the city councilors and therefore it's, it's a greater democracy rather than just being able to vote for one. And we felt also that there was greater collaboration um, when you're not just looking at your district or your neighborhood. Mm, okay. and, and that this, we're building our, our, our region on collaboration and regional collaboration. Sure. So it's really important to maintain that by looking at the whole picture, not just your specific district. Now the voters concurred. Is they that did. Correct? They, they did. They agreed with you. Now what, what do you do to, uh, you know, you, you make this decision and then, then what, did, what did the chamber do to try to, to um, educate people about the Well, our main initiative to educate was actually to hold the forum where we invited people to come and hear both sides of okay, the issue. Okay, so this was and a public forum. We, it oh, was okay. a public forum okay. and we had a moderator who, um, we had a series of questions that the moderator asked and each of the sides had a chance to present okay. their their thoughts about it. And, and then from our standpoint, our government affairs committee then um, discussed it 
privately and we made a recommendation to the board and our board voted on it and then we pr we um, put out a press release about our statement um, to the community and then that's the, the typical type of process and in the future we'll also move to um, doing candidate endorsement and that type of thing because yeah, yeah. the kind of candidate that's in or the, the the legislature we need to be business friendly for our community to mm -hmm. grow and mm -hmm. so it's important from our standpoint that we are working with our legislators and helping them to understand what the issues are that sure maybe impede business growth. Is that typical for a chamber to, to do that? Well, we say in the chamber industry, if you've seen one chamber, you've seen one chamber. <laughs> it's kind of a joke. It's sort of corny. But the thing is, each chamber t tailors itself to the community. Mm -hmm. Some choose to do advocacy and some don't. And, and it's probably about 50-50 or maybe a little bit more mm -hmm. towards advocacy. I would say the larger chambers and larger communities absolutely do because it's part of what their role is right. to, to maintain a healthy business environment and, and economic growth. Right, right. I know growing up, I, the chamber to me was um, the visitor center kind right. of thing, you know. Get, that's who you call when you want to find out what's going on in the city and you know, well, and places it's that to go too. people to see. Yes, but it's gone way beyond that. Mm -hmm. Now you talked about um, the, uh, the growth, the economic growth and the stability of, of the um, you know of the area and how the chamber supports that. Mm -hmm. You um, also mentioned try local first. You right. Know, buy buy local and, and all that. You did a PSA or you didn't? You did a PSA I actually. Did. But we had several different um, key members in the community mm -hmm. do some um, public service announcements about that. And do you mind if we show one yeah, of those? Yeah, let's now? watch one then we can talk about it. Okay, let's. Hi, I'm Cheryl Swart with the West Columbia Gorge Chamber of Commerce. And I'm Michael Gonzalez with the Historic Downtown Gresham Business Association. Lots of community members have embraced the idea of Try Local First, but often we are asked, what can I do? Well, here are four things that you can do to support the Try Local First movement right here in your community. Number one, put a Try Local First sign in the window of your business. You can pick one up at the Gresham Area Chamber of Commerce and Visitor Center. Number two, identify goods or services that you typically do not purchase locally and see if there is a local solution. Number three, experience the flavor and uniqueness of your local farmer's market. And number four, utilize the local Chamber of Commerce offices or websites when looking for a product or service needed. These simple things can make a difference for our entire community. If you would like to learn more, go to trylocalfirst.org. So try local first. Remember, the job you save may be your neighbors. And thank you for shopping locally. So those, those uh, PSAs have been playing on Metro East channels for, for a while now, and, and the Tri-Local First uh, Committee meets here in our conference rooms, and they've, they've done a lot of work. They have, um, are they the ones that started that Charms? Yeah, the Charm Charms program. Thing? Yeah. So the Tri-Local First Committee is actually a committee of the chamber, and it ties right in with um, our concept of having a vibrant and prosperous local economy. And what part of what makes that happen is people investing in their own community, either with their business or by shopping locally. Mm -hmm. I think people underestimate uh, the impact that shopping in your own community has because most local vendors actually live in the community and reinvest back into their right. community and when their business is thriving they also hire locally so it all is a cycle and it's very important and it's one of the ways that the chamber supports economic development there and people don't think of shopping local as economic development but it actually really is and it's it is. that looking at Main Street and how is it thriving and not just our Main Street but in all the jurisdictions right, the right. downtown and what's happening in downtown and so that's one level of economic development and then there's the big picture economic development which is like industrial recruitment and bringing mm -hmm. large companies here and that type of thing we we are involved in that the, the jurisdictions here in um, East County take the lead on that but we support and I'm a part of many economic development groups where we talk about strategy and how we're going to do that and what are things that need to happen um, f to be business friendly. Um, but there's also a whole nother level that you may not think about and that's like economic development through tourism and that ties into our visitor mm -hmm. center mm -hmm. side of things. And so we're, we're working right now on a variety of initiatives um, to bring together the region to look at, well, what do we need to do to be bicycle friendly, to have more oh, bicycle, um, bicycle tourists here? Great. And we're very well poised because we're, we're the gateway to the gorge as well as to Mount Hood. And so there's so many great trails, the Springwater Trail, it's, there's yeah. the Gresham Fairview Trail, there's all kinds of yeah. things. And that it's are, a great area for Exactly. So that's just another way. There's so many ways that it impacts. 
So that's that's one of the things they'll be working on is the bicycle. Uh -huh. What do you call it? The tourism. bicycle tourism. Right. That's that's great. That's a yeah. great that's a great uh, that's a great way to go because I think this would be a, a super area for that. So we're almost out of time, Allison. Anything else that you think people need to know about or should be thinking about besides the fact that it is the holiday season and they should be you know, shopping, shopping local. locally? Absolutely. Well, I would say, you know, largely, um, like I said, how we're the spoke in the wheel. Mm -hmm. The chamber connects people in business. We have many events throughout the year that do that. But one of the things is it's not just us connecting a business but it's who all those people in the business know for mm -hmm. example if I'm working my network you may call me and say oh I need to know so-and-so and when I connect you to that person mm -hmm. then you're not only connecting to my network you're connected into their network right, and right. so we think of the chamber as actually the physical LinkedIn uh, yeah um, I was where you're, say you're, that's what you're enlarging yeah. your network and that's why it's a value to people in the community and it's it's not just coming to the events because it's it's not just that right, it's about right having that resource and, and being able to be in the hub of things and if you don't know where that is to call and say hey I need to be connected here here and here whether it's yeah. economic development advocacy or you know just growing your business right. or education or what have you so it's yeah. in all of those ways Good. if you're a business in East County and you're not a member of the chamber you're missing out <laughs> you're missing out thank you Allison so much and you're doing a great job there and um, very uh, happy about those awards you got yeah. this year. That's Thank great. you. We're very yes. pleased about that, too. Thanks for watching this first segment of Community Hotline. And please don't go away. We'll be right back with some, some more terrific information from 211 uh, Info. So stay tuned. Volunteers are the cornerstone of local communities, and they enjoy the satisfaction that comes from being part of something larger than themselves. Multnomah County invites citizens to participate in projects that benefit the greater good of our residents. Want to help homeless animals? There are countless volunteer opportunities with Multnomah County Animal Services. There's always a lot to do when caring for almost 10,000 animals a year. Our shelter is at the forefront of animal care with some of the most progressive programs in the nation, and we depend on volunteers to keep those programs running. From showing cats to potential owners, to training dogs in the shelter, to fostering a shelter pet in your home, you can help your community by volunteering your time and talents with animal services. To find out more about this volunteer opportunity, visit their website. To explore other volunteer opportunities, contact the Office of Citizen Involvement. Shape your community. Volunteer. KZME Radio is a new station that is committed to entertain, inspire, and connect our community through programming that celebrates local music, arts, and culture. It was created to put local music and local arts on local radio and it is a vehicle for our creative community to gain exposure while also celebrating what the Portland metro area has to offer. Hey folks, I'm Mike Midlow from the band Pancake Breakfast. What's so cool about KZME? Well, it's local music. You know, you can't go to every live show. Believe me, I've tried. So you can tune into KZME and hear a bunch of music that you might not get to see otherwise. Why should you support KZME? Well, it's pretty obvious. I mean, if you'd like Portland Town, USA, homegrown music, independent radio, and if you believe in the powers of rock and roll, then contribute to KZME. It's music where you live. My favorite thing about community media is how people find their voice and tell their story. It's the message of, by, and for a community. We're a gathering place because it gets people of all sorts of different backgrounds underneath one roof. It's art, it's technology. A snapshot of our community. Going live in three, two, one. one. The League of Women Voters makes history. Our country would not be the same without their dedication. Formed by women who organized to win women the right to vote. It is now a co-ed organization. Studying, informing, and acting. Nonpartisan. Grassroots. Influential. Taking political stands on many issues. The League of Women Voters encourages all citizens to be informed and active in government. 
Join the League of Women Voters of East Multnomah County in making history today. Hi, and welcome back to Community Hotline. I'm Monica Weitzel. We're here at Metro East Community Media in Gresham, Oregon. And with me now I have Roberto Rivera, who is the Early Childhood Liaison from 211 Info. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Now, 211 Info um, does all sorts of things. It's, it's a resource for the community that I really didn't know very much about. So maybe you could start out, Roberto, by telling us exactly what your organization does, what the, what the mission is. So we are a nonprofit organization that provides information and referral to Oregon and Southwest Washington for free. People dial 211, they let us know what their needs are, and we we'll search in our database and either provide information or a referral to an agency that can provide a service to the, to the caller. Um, so like so like 911 if there's an emergency people call it's a free call mm -hmm. this call is non emergency but well in most cases i would assume it's non non emergency but it's but you provide all sorts of information is that, that, that right? is that is correct tell, uh, tell me some of the, some of the, some of the areas uh, that you cover um, a lot of people call us because they are uh, either being evicted from their apartment or they have uh, they're falling behind on their electricity mm -hmm. and so we get a lot of those calls and we're searching our database anywhere in the state of Oregon or southwest Washington and uh, if an agency or a program exists in their community we provide them a referral to those to that service so they can uh, either take you know take advantage mm -hmm. and, and, uh, or benefit from those programs um, and so that's that's what we do. Um, we're the agency that is known for asking the second question. Sometimes, you know, callers just call two one one because they're looking for a number. But because we ask the second question, we find out that there isn't any food in their house, oh. and so we connect them. You know, the second question enables us to say, you know, there's a resource in your community that also provides a food box, and uh, you can go during this hour or uh, at this location, and and uh, this is what you need to bring in order to take advantage of those services. So you don't um, take. The, the call at face value you dig a little deeper we do dig a little bit deeper just to get the uh, the work you know to get the um, a sort of like an assessment or mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. what our callers are facing at that time and and you know and use our database basically as a tool sure. to to generate a list of resources that they can also take advantage of so you must have a lot of uh, partnerships I don't know if you call them partnerships but with lots of other nonprofits and government agencies I imagine that's basically yes that is correct and so it is a partnership with the uh, agencies other nonprofit agencies or provi or service providers that have a sliding scale fee so if it's a clinic uh, e either a, you know a free clinic or a clinic that that is uh, um, provides a service at a low, low cost for mm -hmm. our callers. We have the partnership. We also partner with uh, local governments and their programs, uh, you know, the SNAP, uh, mm -hmm. the Healthy Kids, uh, the um, OHP. So if our call, one of our callers calls and, and doesn't have health insurance, then we could provide them a referral to, 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 to the Oregon Health mm -hmm. Plan and, you know, take oh, advantage right. of those. That's great. You know, working with um, nonprofits like I do in this show, I have been amazed by how many how many organizations there are out there to help people, and people don't know, always know about them. You know, they they know what maybe their neighbors have used or they or what their family has you know run across in the past. But there are so many organizations out there to help people in all sorts of ways. That so, is. So you're you're the you're the uh, you're the means by which they can find out about most of those. That that is correct, and and we have a, I want to say that we have a call center here in Portland where our call uh, takers, our community information specialists, are trained, um, they have the compassion, and they're also trained on how to navigate our database, and, and also on, on asking the second question, and digging a little bit deeper, and, and kind of getting the, you know, the full picture of what our callers are facing in, in all, throughout the state, so. Sometimes um, people have a hard time asking for help, too, and I bet you maybe, I bet you they're, they pick up on that after a while, that these people, yeah, there's something else that they need. That is correct. Now, are the, are the people that are taking the calls, are they staff? There are full-time staff. staff yeah. um, um, well, they're a mixture of full-time, part-time staff. And so 
um, their pay. Okay. Uh, and so, do you have volunteers at all? I know it's a nonprofit, and most nonprofits work with you know lots of volunteers. But yours is is not a so much a volunteer organization. Be, because of the nature of the work right, that we right. do, um, we we really um, don't uh, have the capacity to have volunteers. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes um, sense. So, so if if somebody were um, uh, give, give me an example, I guess, of, of an, uh, somebody that may have called this last week and how they would have been helped. So last week um, we got a lot of calls uh, from throughout, throughout the state in southwest Washington um, for um, holiday assistance programs. And mm. So people calling because they either need a place to go to, they need a place for the upcoming you know, holidays um, to have a Christmas dinner or um, um, toys for, you know, a gift for their, right. for their kids. Right. And so we get a lot, of, we got a lot of those calls. And then, you know, through the process, we find out that some of our callers might be facing an eviction, or they might be um, they might need a dental clinic. You know, they're they're, they're they have all no facing heat all in this, their house. They're, they're, and it's starting to get cold or something like that. It's, it's, yes, yeah. and so you know, we can either provide them to a referral for a clinic or a weatherization program. Maybe it is a you know that they don't have any um, insulation in their house, and or or the you know they're just falling behind on their bills, and so you know it's it's the it's sort of like the gateway call but then you dig a little bit deeper you, you you find out there is a lot of other issues that given that they exist you know the programs exist in their in in their uh, area mm -hmm. then we can certainly you know provide a, a referral to to those agencies or services so. yeah. you know what's really great about this roberto is that it, it you make it so much easier for people because you know if if somebody is in need of assistance for whatever reason it can be very time consuming either to look through a phone book or if they have a computer to dig through, you know, and try to find those organizations that can help them. And there's, there's lots of them, but it's hard to find them, hard to know which ones you would qualify for, which ones are worth pursuing. So you really um, cut out a lot, of that, a lot of that time and stress and energy that people have to put into to try to find the help they need. Plus, I imagine a lot of the times they don't even know that that assistance is available to them. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's where, you know, it only takes three numbers, 211. That's easy. And, uh, and uh, you know, let us know where your needs are. Let us know, you know, we, we will ask you several questions. You don't have to provide us any information. So if this you can know, be anonymous. People this, don't have to tell you who they are. This can be a confidential call. Um, and, uh, and but you know, all that we care is that we provide the, the correct information to services in your area that you, you know, and that includes the eligibility that you are eligible to take the advantage of the services. We really don't like to, uh, to refer people to, to a service, to a provider, or to an agency where they don't qualify for the services. Oh, yeah. And yeah. so um, that's, you know, that's very unique to us. So we have that information in our database and are able to do a sort of like a, a pre-screening to, you know, pre-eligibility uh, for those services. And so that's where you know, we add the value to our Yes, you do, so. you do. Now, if, if someone, um, well, tell me, that you, you talked about the database. Is, is that something that other people have access to, or, or do we, um, if we need, you know, your help, we just, we call you, and that's, that's so, the way to get it. So, um, that is actually a good question. <laughs> Anyone has access to our database, and it's the same information to our callers. Our goal, basically, is to increase the accessibility to everyone mm -hmm. in, in our state. In, in Southwest not Washington, has a computer, and so uh, not everyone has yeah, a computer. Right. Not everyone, you know, uses the internet. Um, but a lot of people have a, a way to make a call. And so um, back to the computer, uh, you know, internet. We, if people uh, want to visit us, we're at www.211info.org. And if you go into the search button, you can uh, search for the same information that that our call center searches for, and uh, and and it's free. That's, um, that's great. So, so. And, and a lot of people are very computer savvy and have access to computers, but not everyone does. Um, for example, if someone is a homeless person, you know, it's unlikely they're going to have access to a computer unless maybe they go to the library or something. So um, if someone, uh, when the weather gets cold, somebody is a homeless person and they want to, um, and, and it's going to get cold and they need a place to stay mm -hmm. or they need a, a hot meal to eat. You can help them with that kind of thing. Yes, correct? we can certainly provide them with a referral. We are the the you know the number that people call when they're they don't have any shelter, uh, they need an emergency emergency shelter, whether because they're homeless or because of other issues that you know that they were maybe evicted from their apartment. Mm -hmm. um, we do maintain a list of 
uh, uh, agencies that provide um, you know temporary shelters, mm -hmm. housing uh, for um, for individuals facing the the. the the circumstances. Yeah. And, the and, circumstances. And people have different needs. I know, for example, here in East County, uh, there's a place called My Father's House, which houses complete families, mm -hmm. mom, dad, and mm -hmm. the kids, which a lot of shelters don't. It's just, you know, maybe mom and the kids. So you would know, you would have that information. Correct? That is correct. Yeah. We will have that information in our database. So um, people don't either have, you know, don't have to stand in the line and then find out. And then out find out they, they yes. don't qualify. <laughs> very frustrating. Yes. Very frustrating. It's yes. hard enough, I think, asking for help, let alone, um, you know, let alone wait and then be turned down. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you let people know what they need to yes. to be eligible. So what what area does two one one cover? I mean, in, is it is it the whole state of Oregon? You said and, and part of Washington. Was that correct? Or yes. So in Washington, we include uh, uh, Clark and Escamilla County. Okay. And in Oregon, by the end of two thousand and thirteen, we're going to cover the entire state. As it is right now, we say that we cover about 90% um, of the population. Mm, okay. um, some of the, uh, the counties on the east, um, the eastern part of the, the state, is, uh, we still are not there yet, but we will be um, um, by the end of 2013. So, but so, that, so that's the goal, and that's not very far away. So. That's, yes. What, um, how, are, how are you funded? We're funded by the United Way. Oh, and uh, really? which yeah. makes the you know the number free. Uh -huh. uh, from time to time, we do have some you know county programs where we have partnered with the certain counties. So certain o o uh, programs that are funded by the county or by the government to uh, to just increase the accessibility to those services. That's great. So. so um, Anybody can call this number if, if they're in the area, unless, unless they're in rural Eastern Oregon right now, that'll, that'll, be, covered, that'll be covered soon. Um, there's no charge. No charge. No charge at all no. to, to make the call. What, um, what do you think is the, what, what has meant the most to you in working this job? I mean, I imagine there's, you get a lot of, um, maybe some feel good kind of stuff, you know, working with people. What, what's meant the most to you working this job? Um, I like the accessibility that it brings to our communities. Mm -hmm. um, it could be any need. It could be a housing. It could be healthcare. It could be uh, parenting programs, parenting oh, services. They have that too. That's right. Um, yeah. So that's that's the you know the feel good about my yeah. job that that it is any program, any nonprofit, and the fact that it, you know we're focused um, on on serving communities in, in need. And right. um, the other thing that I forgot to mention is that is uh, we have uh, an interpreter bank that we can access. <laughs> you must have been reading my <laughs> mind. That was my next. Question. I was so, going to ask if, if people uh, are, because we have a pretty large immigrant population. That, that is true. And so, um, so we can increase the accessibility with those communities as well. And so, um, so then everyone is using 211. Um, so that, that increases, great. you know, the That's feel great. good factor in, yeah. in my job. And, and it's free. Um, the other thing that I forgot to mention is that we're able to text information back to our callers. We're able to email information back to our oh. callers. So, you know, um, so they, can, they give you the, the number and the it is an option address. yeah yeah so well, that's great that's great so sometimes maybe if the information is not readily accessible then you would say I'll, I'll be texting you or is that the, when you would use that um, no we could use it during the call oh. Um, you oh. know oh, like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm I'm looking up that address for you right now and, and I'll be I'll be texting you or emailing you all the information so you that, don't have to write it down that is correct cool I like that <laughs> so <laughs> I like that now you said um, health care it was one of the things that you cover um, basic needs energy assistance um, housing that kind of thing um, and you did mention there's some family resources and I know you said there's gonna be some changes coming up in that in the next year that they're gonna be expanding on that mm -hmm. um, what about um, people that are, are disabled? Um, do you have, you know, you're able to help them? People with legal troubles, what about that? Those, that those is all in our database. It is, okay. Um, someone, you know, yesterday I did a presentation where someone was, uh, it, well, I went, I attended a meeting where someone asked, is there a program out there that helps you with, uh, um, you know, employment readiness, where they can help you with your resume, where they can mm -hmm. help you with, you know, an interview where mm -hmm. they can help you with an application process. That so that's job. in our database. Um, other uh, programs were kind of additional programs that piggyback on that as the um, help you with your record, you know. Uh, oh, um, the clean slate. The clean slate, yes. yes. So that's in our database. So legal issues either for 
people with, uh, you know, um, that are older adults or, mm -hmm. or younger people as right. well. So that's all in a database. So it doesn't, so it doesn't matter if you need the help. You, you, you can show them where to go. Yes. That's great. And so Good. Uh, anything else? Because we're just about out of time. What is there anything else that people should know about 2 on 1 info? Um, we're a free service to our community. We uh, um, really uh, feel good about being um, active in our communities and in, in, in showing the, the, that we can um, create, increase the accessibility to community services just by using the three numbers or, or our website. So that's... Sounds like just have, having you here in the community is making it a better place to live. Yes. Yeah. And I do want to say that our call center is open Monday through Friday from 8 until 6. 8 until 6. Okay. Good. So. Thank you so much, Roberto. I appreciate your help and I mean, your information that you've given us today. And I know there's a lot of people out there that probably knew nothing about it because I only knew a little bit about it. I had no idea the, the extent of um, the services that you provide. So thank you very much. Thank you. And thanks for watching us here on Community Hotline tonight. If you're inf interested in finding out more information about 2 on one info, well, you know what to do. You just give them a call and you can also go on their website. We will be back here next week. So stay tuned next week. We'll see you at the same time. Good night. Perry, you're watching Metro East, over 25 years of great community media. No matter how great our intentions, on our own, we can only stretch so far. But at Rotary, we believe the right group of people working together can make our communities, our world, a better place. Rotary, humanity in motion. Están listos? Free GED classes. Are you ready? Classes gratis de inglés. Yo estoy lista. Transportation for free. I'm ready. Clases gratis de computación. ¿Qué listos? We're, We're ready. ready. Come to listos. If you can do it, you can do it. What am I supposed to do with all these corks? Turn them into a cork board. What about all these floppy disks? How about a fantastic journal? Hmm, I wouldn't learn how to make cool things like that. Well, come on down to Scrap. 
Scrap has monthly workshops where you too can learn how to make great things. We provide everything you need. For more information, call 503-294-0769 or go to www.scrapaction.org. Scrap. Create more. Consume less.